Oh, here, all right. So here, so here's an excellent question. All right. So, okay. So someone asked here, is the Nintendo NX the new Dreamcast? Now, now when you, uh, you're saying that because Dreamcast is in that ambiguous kind of timeline where it was, it technically jump started the sixth generation of consoles, but really it's more associated with the fifth gen because it died two years after becoming the market, right? Um, so let's, let's, let's do some interesting here, okay? So this actually is a really, really good story. People often don't know why the Dreamcast failed, and there's actually a lot of reasons, okay? The reality here is the Dreamcast itself was a great console, but it was too little too late for Sega because Sega's fucking a horrible, horrible company. Horribly ran company. Don't get me wrong. And I, I grew up, I actually grew up a huge... Sonic fanboy. I didn't even really fuck with Mario until speedrunning came into my life. So let's go back here. So I'm gonna give y'all a quick history lesson about this. So then we're gonna come back to the to the so the question currently is right now is actually no let me let me let me add some production value here, right? Let me let me do that for you quickly. So let me let me just shrink that a little bit and I'm going to add that at the top of the thing that way people know what I'm talking about. Alright, so let's go uh over here. All right, so, so let's go back here. Right? So is the NX the new Sega Dreamcast? So let's, by answering that question, let's go back to the fact, okay, well, what was the Dreamcast and why did it fail? People, people, you know, they're like, oh my God, I love Jet Set Radio. I love Song Adventure 1. I loved Soul Calibur 1. I loved uh, Crazy Taxi um, 1 and 2. There's so much love for the library of Dreamcast, but then you're like, why did it fail? what happened where did it all go wrong and the problem and the real the answer here is it's actually there is really only two factors or two faults of dreamcast and they're pretty minuscule compared to what actually caused the fail that are the reason why it failed the reason why the dreamcast failed is because sega's retarded and sega saturn was a huge blunder that hurt a lot of people so you go back here right now here's here's how it actually happened so in the fourth generation, as you see up there, the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis, 16-bit consoles were at war, right? So when things needed to advance, because we were like, you know, stagnant and at capacity, things move on to the 32-bit era. And with that came um, a, a conflict of interest. Sega of USA was developing Project Mars. Let me come in, I, I forget here. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was called Project Mars, which ultimately became... The 32X. The 32X after the Sega CD was the uh, add-on that gave the Sega the Sega Genesis uh, extended life cycle and made it technically a 32-bit console. But as you already know, it was um, Sega CD flop because it was mostly used for uh, full motion video and it was mostly like barely any games other than Sonic CD and I don't know Magical Poppin. Like there really ain't shit on Sega CD. It's just bad all around. And on the 32X, there's just, like, not a lot either, because it was just, like... And I'll go get into why here in a second. So, Sega of America made Project Mars, or was working on Project Mars, aka the 32X. Meanwhile, Sega of Japan was working on Project Saturn, which ultimately became the Sega Saturn. So, the problem there is you had two divisions of the company can't even, can't even agree on what hardware to fucking make and manufacture and market and make games for. So, it was like, uh, Sega of Japan was like, what the fuck are you doing? They're like, we're doing us. Sega of, of America felt like they understood the, the, the Western market better than Sega of Japan understood the same thing. So they just like kind of did their own things. It was really fucking stupid. It's also why you saw just like this complete, it, it, it gimped itself. There's a big rumor that's always been going around that the reality is Nintendo of Japan does not trust Nintendo of America to an extent. For example, um, the fact that Nintendo constantly auto flags all kinds of Nintendo content on YouTube, so there's like low incentive for 
um, passionate Nintendo fans who are who are full time YouTubers to make and cover Nintendo content because they get fucking content ID cock blocked constantly. And anyone who's sensible in the real world understands that you, yo, let your fans be passionate because it's literally free advertising and good word for you. What are you mad about? You you paranoid old Japanese men. But as you already know, Nintendo of Japan just fucking does the uh, the fucking the the hail Hitler. Uh, raining Nazi swastikas everywhere on all kinds of Nintendo content, including my shit, by the way. All my Yoshi Islands is all tagged by, like, Nintendo. I can't even... There's, like, no ad revenue whatsoever, which I don't even care. It's, like, whatever, but... Um, uh, yeah, all, all that shit's tagged by them, by the way. So, it's clearly... Um, and I'm sure... And trust me, I can tell you, I know people... It's not a jump right now. I know people. I know people. Nintendo America does not want to tag them but NOJ has a uh, superiority and they just and they just you know fucking make it rain swastikas and that's it so they can't even do anything about it so there's that rumor right but this also pulls true for Sega back in the 90s the same thing so whenever you had all this clump of fucking hardware the Sega Game Gear the Sega Nomad the Sega CD 32X the Sega CD built-in hybrid thing that let me ask you all right I want to show you something so stupid. You want to, all right? Let me let me let me give you an example of how stupid Sega was in the '90s. Okay, there was this thing. Um, what was it called? What was it called? Okay, so, all right, so you're all right, so you're familiar with. Let me uh, get rid of this here. You are familiar with uh, this thing here, right? Classic uh, Exhibit A here, the Sega CD, 32X, or the Sega Genesis with a Sega CD docking thing attached to it. Fucking huge as hell, blah, blah, blah. Used literally two fat-ass power bricks on the power supply. You got that. So, there was this other thing. And again, I'm just going to give you the example of how literally fucking stupid Sega is. So, there was this thing called the Sega CDX, right? So, I'm going to pull it all right here for you. Okay, the Sega CDX was literally just a, a slimmer, redesigned Genesis. It had a Genesis cartridge right there, with a built-in with a built-in CD-ROM reader drive. Right, this thing here cost a hundred dollars more than the Sega CD alone. Like what? Huh? So you can buy. Oh, also, it, it did play. Uh, it did play um, uh, music CDs. By the way, it had a literally a little, little fucking little thing on the front. So no, yeah, this this like what? Like just like who the fuck at Sega of America greenlit manufacturing of this thing at final engineering spec at a price point so bafflingly stupid? You're like it's no no. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase here. I'm sorry. I'm don't quote me this one here, but I'm pretty sure this thing literally cost a hundred dollars more than a Genesis and Sega CD together combined. It was just like. Three hundred dollars in that price range, and like ninety, and like ninety-four or ninety-three money, just like retarded. So, just to give you an idea of how stupid things were back in the gap, just so you want, you want to remember. Okay, so now that you understand that, we can uh, get back to the topic here. So, yeah, um, they released all this hardware: Game Gear, Nomad, Portable Genesis, uh, CD thirty-two X, CDX, all this crap, all of it flopped. Well, of course, I'm last Genesis, obviously. All of it flopped, and some people got really fucking burned on that. Particularly, Electronic Arts was like, dude, fuck Sega. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't care about their Project Katana, aka the Dreamcast, at the time, whenever that got announced. And let's go back here on that. So, while the... Okay, also... <clears throat> all right, now we're going to get into um, Sega, Sega Saturn here. Sega Saturn has this, like, this awesome, horrible story. So, you all know E3. Um, what happened at E3 in 1995? <laughs> oh, it's so bad here. So... If we go back, uh, this is this is like I'm giving you what is now literally hardcore history here. So let's um, okay, so let's, let's swing over here, right? Okay, so you all know the Nintendo PlayStation, right? So whenever um, whenever Nintendo wanted to get into using um, CD CD disc technology because of the stagnating um hind 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 um sorry here. Hindrances? Good lord, I'm, forgive me. I'm, I'm a lot. Of, I'm pretty tired right now, anyway. So, uh, cartridges were like, like are, are holding them back to an extent because of capacity and all the other shit. And they wanted to get into newer technology. They had a uh, Ken uh, Ken Kurtaragi actually made a privately made a sound chip for Nintendo against Sony's wishes, which then impressed 
Nintendo, so they they pretty much allowed him to continue making the project and whatnot. So ultimately, what came from this collaboration from Sony and Nintendo in the early '90s was the Nintendo was the Sony the Nintendo PlayStation, and um, Nintendo being very cocky with its dominance of the NES era and the SNES era wanted way more control, and they were scared of how much control Sony was given with their original contract agreement over this over the Nintendo PlayStation, including. Um, Oh, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting where to go with this one now. But they were they were skeptical about something, so then they uh, decided to at last minute bully them and partner with Philips, making the uh, making the uh, a Sega C um a CD add on for the uh, for the Super Nintendo, which ultimately was scrapping was never even released publicly. But then because of the contract they had with Philips for making this thing here, they um, Philips made this the uh, the CDO. Which had all that, all, and it also had rights to a bunch of a bunch of Nintendo characters. And whatnot. So I had the terrible fucking, the terrible Zelda. Um, <laughs> Singing right, it's three yo. Oh yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, so, yeah, you got the fucking. The reason why this exists is because Nintendo like last minute backed out of the Sony thing, did put part with Phillips, gave them this shit. This fucking happened. They couldn't do anything legally about it. Get fucked. Never been acknowledged. Total trash. Right. So this completely embarrassed uh, Sony because they felt they got totally back backstabbed because at at some trade show in like '92 or some shit don't quote me on that I'm, I'm forgetting the year some trade show in '92 or whatever um, Sony felt betrayed and embarrassed and uh, pretty much told Kentaragi and company okay look we got burned by Nintendo fuck them we've invested all this R and D into the CD ROM shit anyway let's fucking release our own goddamn console which is where in 95, at E3, 1995, um, <clears throat> sorry, one second here. Oh, I don't even have it open, goddamn. Uh, you had the, uh, the, the PlayStation 1 happened, right? So, so at the time, um, Sega was like, okay, oh shit, Sony has this super mega console coming out, it's gonna have fucking, you know, 14 inch mega cock swinging around, we're freaking out here. What can we do? What can we make right now? And they already were having their own test. Um, Sega actually was not very keen on pursuing polygon rendering for its console after going into the 64-bit era, going into 15 consoles. Even though polygons, as you know, with the 3D and all that was like the future, everyone was like really excited about that. And um, so they, uh, the Sega Saturn was optimized for a sprite display so like there were a lot of arcade cabinets that used proprietary hardware, their own custom arcade boards and whatnot. And the Sega Saturn was meant to like be a super arcade cabinet to handle rich, complex sprite work with a huge color palette and just like all kinds of other shit, right? So, <clears throat> um, but they they did not really prioritize polygon management in their um, architecture of the Sega Saturn. And here's actually the funny story here. I don't have confirmation on this one. This sounds really plausible here. Is that the Sega Saturn, in short, has like two CPUs in it because the uh, one of the high ends at Sega of Japan literally said, um, our shit can't compete muscle-wise with the PlayStation. Holy shit. When he got word of what their spec was going to be like. And he was like, he impulsively said, let's add a second CPU chip Forgive me, I don't know exactly what it's called here. Um, a second CPU chip into um, into the Sega Saturn, and then engineers were like, "Well, we don't really know how to utilize two of those at once." Um, as you sure it's a good idea, and I was like, "I don't fucking care, do it." So it was done. Sega Saturn was engineered or just or flat out manufactured with literally two <laughs> CPUs inside of it. It's kind of like I can't even explain how to, how 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 actually done that really fucking is just bump manufacturing up manufacturing cost of Sega Saturn retardedly, but so now you know that 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 small thing happened there at E3, 1995, um, Sega goes Sega goes up first and reveals Sega Saturn, which everyone at that point was informed it was gonna come out in the fall of '95, including all developers. Right? They surprised everyone, including developers. Didn't keep them in the know whatsoever here that it's out available now. Sega Saturn, three ninety nine, four hundred US dot, four hundred US nineteen ninety five inflated dollars. It is out and available now at these four select retailers right now. So they made a a, a pact with KB Toys, not KB Toys. I'm sorry. Um, 
Um, four, four, select, four select retailers, not including Walmart, not including Target, not including many other people. So retailers from Max got burned on, on being part of the exclusivity Cool Kids Club of Sega. Uh, developers were fucking furious because they, had, they were developing things to be part of the launch window hype. And now they were going to be coming out much later because the, the fucking Sega Saturday came out now. And four hundred dollars. People, there was some mild applause. Afterward, Sony goes up and says one thing: two ninety nine. <laughs> Destroy. Right away, Sega knew they lost hard. Not only was PlayStation more powerful, not only did it have a stronger library with Sony just going fucking fucking huge dick swinging all around here. Say could never catch up because of the fact that they had this fucking Frankenstein 2 CPU design in there meant that price drops didn't happen. The, the Sega Saturn remained $399 for quite a while. Keep in mind here that both N64 and PS1 started at $300 when they first came out. So Sega got fucked really hard on that. Now, keeping all that in mind here, even though Sega Saturn took a fat L in the U.S., Sega Saturn still did moderately well in Japan because, again, arcade scene was booming and it was a, a, pretty much a, a fluid in arcade, arcade cabinet and a goddamn console at home. So there was actually a lot of great J content on Sega Saturn still doing well here. But as you already know, Sega America was like, oh my fucking god, we need, we need, to, uh, we need to figure out what the fuck to do. Not like this. What the fuck are we going to do? And Project Katana, aka what ultimately became the Dreamcast, started going into research development and come out. Remember, the Sega Saturn came out in 95, the Dreamcast came out in 99. Like, real fast. To give you some context for what I mean by that, the if the Saturn came out in 95, the N64 came out in 96, the Dreamcast came out in 99, Conker's Bad Fur Day came out in 2001, Paper Mario came out in 2001. The PS2 launched in 2000. Like, just to give you some timelines for you to understand, like, yo, N64 was still kicking. PS1 was still kicking. Um, Dreamcast was, you know, getting there, but the install base was never it was never what the other two were at the time. So, they, they like, very impulsively, you had a... So, when you think that the Wii U, you know, came and died and fiddled with, with like, a four-year lifespan, you know, the, the, Dream, the Wii U came out in December 2012, and it effectively is going to be dead May, May, March... 2017, the the Sega Saturn came out in 95, and that bitch was fucking dead by 99, honestly, so to give you an idea of there. So as you understand, all that failure, almost though, so one more thing here, so the, the Sega Saturn still was doing well in Japan, and then Sega of America pretty much kind of like forced Sega of Japan to, I don't know, there was like so much R&B going on from SOA to get the Katana moving in production that, um, that... It kind of forced SOJ to obey what SOA was doing because they had so much money being dumped at R&D of Katana. And all, all that all that mismanagement meant that um, a market where Saturn was doing decent got burned because they just killed Saturn like that. And, really, and, and the Katana, the Dreamcast, came out in 99, even though it was doing well in Japan. So there were many... If you are current, If you're currently a Wii U owner who feels burned because um, the, the Nintendo Switch is going to be coming out soon... And I'm gonna go list now. It's gonna be coming out soon, and you feel like your your, your console should be alive longer. You feel like your 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 library should be larger, or whatever it may be, and you feel like you're getting burned by that. Trust me, it was way worse for Sega Saturn owners when the Katana just came out out of nowhere and totally said fuck 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 Sega Saturn, new install base and whatnot. So all that happened. So now you understand that here that developers were pissed off at Sega because of the 32x Sega CD hardware fucking saturation and the Sega Saturn being a huge giant fucking floppy Cheeto dick failure <laughs> little Cheeto dick failure um and then that by the time the Dreamcast came out it was just too little too late man you had so many mistakes you had this you had the PS1 get so much dominance in the market because of all your negligence that whenever Sony announced the PS2 coming people were fucking ready now, I know all that now, the, 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 Sega, the Sega Dreamcast itself had two critical failures oversights that caused the PS2 to just fucking bull stomp it in the nuts. Hardcore here. And that was the fact that Sega Dreamcast used GD-ROMs, um, game, 
a gigabyte disc. I'm sorry, a GG ROM drive. It used gigabyte discs. It was they were um, SNK 2012. What's up, bro? <sighs> so yeah, the the Dreamcast used uh, GD ROMs, gigabyte discs. They were literally just super CDs that had had. It was you know just CDs that had one gigabyte capacity. <clears throat> And um, did not did opted to not pursue uh, DVD drive things. I mean, honestly, look if Sega if Sega is dumb enough to make a fucking a Sega CDX that costs hundred dollars more than the two the two uh, accessories sold separately, then do you think that Sega was smart enough to even like consider the future of optical media or try to try to do any kind of adoption race to make it beyond just a gaming console? No, I mean we're at, we're talking about a time here just to give you an idea of how really abysmal engineering overall was let me just show you the atari the atari jaguar controller people didn't know what the fuck to do so much that atari said fuck it put a numb pad on the fucking thing they'll figure it out so give them a six button genesis pad and put a fucking numb pad literally on the controller so when, when you see engineering or decision making this stupid in the 90s, and this is, this is, this is, this is during, this is 96 right here. This is like, this is when Sega Saturn was like flopping massive cock right now. When you see shit this dumb, <laughs> it shouldn't surprise you. So yeah, Dreamcast did not pursue DVDs. Um, what was the other mistake here? Actually, yeah, there was two of them. And of course, the, uh, the rampant piracy, because you could fit pretty much... The intention here was that by using GD ROMs rather than CD ROMs, people have to acquire, you know, these expensive GD ROM discs in order to try to pirate. But like most games fit on CDRs anyway, so it didn't even fucking matter. Um. <laughs> All right, so uh, and there's also more things too, but this is also why the Dreamcast died. It was because of <laughs> lifetime shit. What's up? Okay, so now that you understand the Dreamcast, uh, ultimately the tombstone that was coming because Sega was so negligent, stupid, idiotic, dumb, moronic, egotistical, um, negligent of all kinds of factors and things, EA to date never. The Gaven? Holy shit. Y'all, The Gaven is here right now. Holy fuck. Can I get some, can I get some, uh, Gabe in the chat, please? So now that you understand just how butt-fucking-retarded stupid Sega was in the 90s, it shouldn't surprise you at all that Dreamcast died. As soon as the PS2 dropped... Oh, shit, it's a Risa. Bro, I know nothing I do. You, you dirty lurk, you never post. Don't be mad. I'm sorry, baby. You know I love you, son. Thank you so much. Oh, dude, glorious. What's up, Noir? So, where are we going with this now? Um... So yeah, the um, it didn't have DVD drive and it had rampant piracy for a bunch of fucking reasons. And my my webcam is now lagging for some reason. I'm gonna fix that real quick. Um, so now that you, you know all that, um, as soon as PS2 came out, it was a dude. Dreamcast was a dead fish in water. I just keep things kind of lagging me right now. Uh, yeah, dead dead fish in water, right? To so just like not good. And to give you an idea here, if we go back here, if we go back, um, I can, I can, we can, we can, we can always go back here. Okay, so let me just let's let's go back to yesterday, okay? just to give you an idea of how. Cause you're wondering, okay, well, the, the Dreamcast had the VMU and the, 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 also um, again, lifetime thing for three months in a row. Dreamcast had the VMU and Song Adventure and Soul Calibur and Power Stone and Power Stone 2 and Let me tell let me remind you how fucked Sega was at the time and then we're gonna get back to that question here. Don't worry I remember the question here is Is the NX Nintendo Switch the new Sega Dreamcast? So you're wondering here. How did how did Dreamcast lose so badly blah 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 sure had DVD whatever So if we go back to the glorious year, let me just show you how thoroughly fucked Dreamcast was Look at this! Look at this throwback ad to um, to the two ho Fall and Holiday 2001 exclusive software titles, bro. 
just look at this shit and look at how look at how um how healthy your gaming was then gta 3 eco jack and daxter 1 metal gear solid 2 first off metal gear solid 1's incredibly innovative thing silent hill 2 gran turismo 3 final fantasy 10 devil may cry 1 fucking namco with uh ace combat 04 like or ace combat 4 i'm sorry uh dude like the haymakers did not stop oni musha i mean just fucking fucking name dude, this is just the holiday 2001 lineup dude that thing had game bangers never fucking stop and you and you all know gta 3 changed the game and was on ps2 for quite a fucking while so holy fucking shit hell yeah they're a fucking rat dude remember because they give you an idea here going back here in time um sonic adventure 2 came out in 2001 pick mario 1 came out in 2001 congress bad birthday came out in 2001 all this shit came out in 2001 so you tell me where you were at at that point Probably, probably in the, uh, probably in that uh, Sony camp. But yeah, dude, no PS2 destroyed. Now, all that in mind, <clears throat> all of that in mind, the PS2 was the cheapest DVD player on the market. Remember what I said before? Uh, Sony released it at a loss to then reap in royalty fees for developers putting in something in the first place. So. Even if you wanted this revolutionary new optical media um, playback device that was the most revolutionary thing since VHS in the fucking 80s, you wanted a PS2 because it can it, it was your DVD player. Get you a girl who can do both. Bitch was a DVD player and a fucking game powerhouse. Why wouldn't you get it? Straight up. The end. Game over. Like, look at that. Look, look at this launch library. Look at this launch library, dude. So this is why the Dreamcast never recovered totally sunk had, had extra inventory and that was it bro <sighs> fucking do fucking tech tech and tag turf um Tekken, <laughs> tech and tag tournament fucking ridge racer five smugglers run one ready to rumble boxing midnight club one racing like dude this just dead or alive two silent scope like you already do this these are all like minuscule now but this was like this was all Hot shit back in the back in the gap, bro. You already look. You already know. Look, you look at you right now. Craig Asm, Craig Asm, Craig Asm. And uh, um, <clears throat> all right. So now to understand. Uh, and then I'll, finally, the last thing here is that again, developers like EA never released anything on the Dreamcast because they were burned from the Sega Saturn's failures and whatnot. So this is why the Dreamcast failed. Now you understand. <sighs> now you understand. And just to, just to cap it all off here, be ready, boys. That's not, even the one I, that's not even the one I want, dude. Like, bad one. Give me a good one. <sighs> Press F and chat, boys. Dreamcast, dead forever. Dude, I, I miss it. Not as good. <sighs> All right, so. Nah, 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 I know, right? Like, fucking PS3, what, what even was that? Um, okay, so, <laughs> PS4 startup, lol, lol, lol. I know, dude, I know. I'm, I'm hurting inside, too, actually. Um, real talk here, okay, look, if we're gonna flex on the, on the boot screens here. Um, if we're gonna flex, the, if we're gonna flex the best uh boot noise ever then i gotta flex this one this one real quick i don't know the kind of low on that one but I, I love the psp one actually all right so anyway so not, not not the best one particularly but you get the point there okay so now that you understand that um dreamcast why it failed is the nintendo switch the new dreamcast only in only in terms of categorization, because 
GameCube for days. GameCube. <laughs> all right, are you? Are, 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 we're not gonna do this one now, are we? Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 Good lord. You just got. You just gotta. You gotta do this. Don't. Don't we? There are quite a few these, by the way, so you know. And of course, yeah, there's, there's quite there's quite a few of these variables right here. When you hold Z button on all four controllers, very few people know about this one actually. Hold A and B on all four controllers and you switch the memory card A to B. Oh my god. I was gonna fucking zero out of ten trash out of here. Alright, like <laughs> I see what I had a dislike. I was like, wait, wait, this is a thing? I don't know about that one. Alright, anyways though, so that aside here, the last thing you wanna see, just if we're gonna show up this real quick here, is here's the last one for you. <laughs> So yeah, dude, that fucking also already already liked Ben found that fucking loved it certified banger in chat please. If you want it? Here you go. You have that. Okay, so uh, dank dankness aside here, smooth criminal sample fucking straight fire right there. Straight can I get some mango bangers in chat please. Uh, so is the Nintendo Switch the new Sega Dreamcast? No, Sega fucking idiot deserve their failure. I sucks, but you know what are you gonna do now? And now they're reduced to. They're, you know they were at, they actually were at a point where they uh, they had less than nine hundred million dollars in total operation uh, in terms of assets and uh, whatever Sonic Boom hardcore flopped, shocker that um, <laughs> Sega at that point literally um, did not have enough money to even develop another Sonic game. They had to resort to Sonic Sonic Dash Sonic, Sonic Dash right. They actually had to actually had to use Sonic Dash and milk mobile gaming's division of Sega to recoup enough money to even start making what is now known as uh, the Sonic NX20 or Project Underground, whatever it's called, whatever it's called. <laughs> Yuna92 Riot, you welcome back, man. Hmm. Yeah, so they didn't even have enough money to even actually make uh, make Sonic Mania and whatever whatever the fuck the other game is going to be, whatever not whatever not Sonic Generations 2 is going to be in development right now. I know, I'm sorry about that, y'all. Um, <laughs> uh, Yuna, welcome back. Thank you so much. Uh, gotta go fast and then lose money. Yeah, so that, uh, that, that thing, that, I don't, that, you know, looks terrible, but whatever. Um, they deserve that, though. Difference here is that Nintendo has not neglected uh, hardware whatsoever. They've, um, or they've made some questionable decisions, sure. There's been some arrogance with the 3DS and whatnot. Um, there's been... Uh, some some really bad naming conflictions altogether with the Wii U and to the extent the 3DS, you know, especially when we look at the fact that the, the fucking uh, you look at you look at dumb shit, right? There's and there's a lot there's a lot of dumb shit uh, 